I'm Kelsey Zeiser. I'm a senior editor at Light Reading, and we're here at the Network X event in Paris. And I am joined yet again by the amazing Ian Morris. Hello again, Kelsey. <laughs> You're <good>. still amazing. <laughs> Uh, so you went to a cloud panel, I, did, I believe. Yeah. How was that? It was good. So it was on the issue of using the public cloud to support telco and IT workloads. And um, I mean, it's clear there's still quite a lot of resistance to doing it. I think people get the impression that everything's moving into the public cloud. And um, it doesn't seem to be the case at all. There's quite a lot that's happening on the IT side, the OSS and the BSS. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the core network and um, I mean, even less so with the radio access network, actually, and things like that. There's not really a lot happening outside one, one or two very prominent uh, examples, like DISH is the big one, clearly, where they're, yeah. they're putting just about everything they can inside uh, AWS, and, uh, and then a few trials. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I thought it was going to They had some um, guys on from various operators, three in the UK, Deutsche Telekom and KPN, talking about some of their concerns and what they need to see, I guess, before they, they do something like that. And um, So is there still a lot of reliance on a hybrid clouds or the mix of private public? Yeah, I think, I mean, one of these, one of the uh, misconceptions, I think, is um, has come out of the AT&T deal with uh, Microsoft Azure in the States, which for a long time got positioned as a telco putting its 5G core in the public cloud. And, AT&T sort of pushed back on that a lot and said, we're not actually doing that. We're using Microsoft's cloud stack, you know, okay. their technology in our facilities. So it's like, it's kind of similar to what the guys like Red Hat, I suppose, or VMware would do. Um, and I think that's a concern for those companies, for the likes of Red Hat and VMware, that Microsoft, AWS, Google Cloud are now kind of moving into that market. They're not just, they're not just trying to work through their own facilities, but they're taking their taking their products, if you like, taking their infrastructure set and, and moving into a private cloud scenario. Okay. Um, so that's that's definitely up, that's definitely an option for some of the people that were in the session I was uh, I was yeah. on. But um, but in terms of actually, I mean, the big the big one, I think, on the telco side is it's partly to do with regulation, like privacy concerns and where the government says data has to be stored. Um, it's partly just telco's own concern about losing control, I think, of something that's like a really, really critical to what they do. It's quite different from uh, an IT application. Yeah. And I think it's partly just the requirements of the network. So latency is like an issue we talk about all the time when it comes to 5G and how you have to have that, you know, you have to have your, um, your network rolled out quite close to the edge, as they call it, close to the users to get the full benefits. And mm -hmm. the trouble with using um, the public cloud is that you, you can't really guarantee that. you. Um, you really, you really sort of need to be using, you know, making use of your own facilities. But you can certainly do it. I mean, the hyperscalers would argue, and there seems to be some agreement from the telcos that were on the um, in the session that I was at, that you can you can do that. You can work with a hyperscaler and do it in a kind of private cloud setting. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so really, I think it's a really interesting topic, just because yeah. it's still to me a sort of transfer of control in a way. Yeah. You know, you're so working, is there a concern you know, that they can't meet some of those edge computing yeah. requirements or goals that not they have? If they, not, not if it was strict public cloud. Okay. What, we, what, we, you know, what we should really say as a public cloud, rather than a Microsoft bringing its technology stack into your, into your facilities, mm -hmm. into your network. Okay. Uh, I think Did, if they're doing that, there's no reason why they can't meet the latency requirements in the same way that, that Red Hat or VMware can. Mm -hmm. So. Did they talk about any security concerns? Or? Yeah, okay. security is the other one. And I think sometimes governments have quite, like certainly European governments have quite stringent rules on this. And they're saying what you hear regulators saying in private sometimes differs from what they say in public. I'm not quite sure what they meant by that, but there's clearly this concern. They're getting kind of mixed messages on the uh, regulatory side, and that's making it even harder for them to sort of plan and make decisions about where to go. But uh, I mean, Deutsche Telekom was one of the one of the companies that was presenting, and they're very clearly not going the, through the public cloud route. They're, they're actually building their own, hmm. like they call it, I think disparagingly gets referred to by the by the hyperscalers as do-it-yourself cloud. Okay, you know yeah. they call it, So they call it TCAS, which I guess stands for Telecom Containers as a Service, but it's their own internal platform that they're using for, for telco workloads. Um, but it would be a DT specific thing. It wouldn't be something, it's not like an off the shelf thing that you've got from uh, VMware or, or one of yeah. those guys either. Yeah. So there's there's all these different 
models up for, you know, that, that are being experimented with. And, and you, I imagine the, the TCAS you said, the yeah. kind of do-it-yourself model might be difficult from uh, a skill set standpoint, having yeah. the employees that are able to do that. Yeah, that would have been a good question. No one asked that, and I didn't yeah. think to ask okay. either, but that would I have been a good been question. There. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, definitely. I think, uh, yeah, that is, that is the thing. I mean, one of the reasons for going into the public cloud, or at least working with a hyperscaler on a, on a private cloud deployment, is that you can, um, I think some of the savings come from not having to invest in those sorts of resources, right. whether it's on the staffing side, having the expertise to do it, mm -hmm. um, or just buying server equipment. And, and you know, there's this new thing that er Ericsson and Google have been talking about on the RAN side where, and this, this is probably a long way from actually being deployed because I think the RAN's even further behind the pool when it comes to, um, you know, to these sorts of setups. But Google actually comes along and puts its, hardware into your facilities and you know you and then Ericsson runs the software on top of it and as a telco you you sort of sign up for a monthly subscription service yeah. and it would probably fluctuate depending on traffic I guess but that's totally different from going out and buying yeah servers and having people to you know how to work with them and everything so it's making everything as a service yeah <laughs> yeah so so having the expertise to actually build your own cloud as well as do all of that is quite a big undertaking but I guess it gives them the the control they want and it probably maybe it's something they that was forced on them by regulation in germany which is really really strict like okay. i think it's the strictest in the yeah. eu sort of region um, is the strictness around um the data privacy it's about data privacy okay. so that i think in germany you have to the data has to be stored within the national territory so you couldn't have and this is why public cloud wouldn't work in some cases because the data center might be somewhere else mm -hmm. you know it might not be in germany and then that's um it's just not allowed under yeah. their rules. I think, and this is one of the reasons I think that the likes of Microsoft have moved into this model where they're bringing their stuff and putting it in your facility. That's almost a workaround, I think, for those sorts of uh, regulatory concerns. And isn't with uh, GDPR, there's a lot of regulations on even if you have, if a company has access to certain data, what they can do I with it, so. depending I, on what yeah, their customer I, agreed I'm to. Definitely not the person to talk to <laughs> on GDPR, but probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think how they, how the hyperscalers treat the data would be a concern as well. And it's obviously yeah. a, an EU thing, even though it's kind of being adopted by other regulators in other parts of the world. So, um, yeah, I suspect that is a barrier as well. But regulation was a big one. That was cited as one of the okay. big things. There's that. I think there's just the latency issues and whether they can do it and uh, concern about losing control, which they didn't really say directly. But I think that's... That's I feel what, like that's, that's always the that's underlying. Always the yeah. Once they give, once they sort of give that away, mm -hmm. um, and the hyperscalers are doing, they're almost running the network for them as well. Yeah. There's not a lot really left that they do other than customer service, and you know, meanwhile that's all going the way of ChatGPT, and right. so they they seem yeah. to become slightly less relevant in the picture. Uh, was were there any other sessions that you've been to yet? That's, I know it's that, mainly we had the you know the keynotes this yeah, morning, which we talked about. That was, um, that's the main one, and I've yeah. just sort of been wandering around looking at some of the exhibition stands. Uh, yeah. There's quite a lot going on with um, Nokia talking about 25G PON. It's this next sort of uh, iteration of the um, you know the kind of broadband standard, the fibre to the to the home PON standard. Yeah. Um, and the big pitch there, I guess, is that you can their big pitch is that you can sort of upgrade along these, uh, you know, to, to higher and higher gigabits per second without having to make huge infrastructure investments once the, once the fiber has been laid. Um, it's just a case of doing some software upgrades and putting a bit of new equipment in, but it's not the, yeah. it's not the big dig that you need at first, which, which sounds great from a telco perspective. I'm kind of wondering whether it's as good a thing from the vendor perspective, you know, because maybe there's less money to be made on their side, but, um, but that's, I mean, you see quite a few 25 G pond signs around. So that's, uh, fairly big topic, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to um, hearing more about, uh, you know, fiber deployments by the European operators, yep. as well as how they're addressing the digital divide. There's some a couple sessions on that. So it should yep. be an interesting should afternoon. Be. I think Orange is on tomorrow talking about that. So yeah. Who wants to look forward to? Yeah, I'll flag that one. Well, thanks, Ian. Appreciate the update. Okay, cheers, Kelsey.